The Lord of the Rings Rings of Power Season 2 is officially here, and I got a chance to check it out early. This is going to be my non-spoiler review, and I'm very happy to say that it is a big step up from the first season. What's going on, buddy? Welcome back to a brand new TV review for Rings of Power Season 2. Of course, Rings of Power Season 2 takes place right after Sauron has revealed himself, cast out by Gladriel. Without an army or ally, the rising Dark Lord must now rely on his own cunning to rebuild his strength and oversee the creation of the Rings of Power, which will allow him to bind all the people of Middle-earth to his sinister will. Now, of course, this builds off of Season 1, which for me had a very big and epic scope but also ambition to itself and there was a lot of people who did not like season one and primarily I was one of the few people that actually did enjoy season one but I was more blown away by the ambition and scope specifically of the first few episodes and it started to lose me a little bit in the middle and by the finale I was like okay I'm in I like this I'm invested in these characters in these worlds once again but let's see how season two goes and I'm again happy to say that season two is a bigger step up than the first season in a lot of different ways. First off, I'm really happy it's not just this puzzle box of mysteries and so many questions of like, who is this stranger? Who is Saron? And all these little things. Like it always felt like there were questions after questions and build up after build up. And season one delivered most of somewhat of that by the end. But season two is not that. It's doubling down on these adventures, on these characters and relationships itself and diving into the meat and potatoes of what you actually want from Lord of the Rings, which is great character building as well as great lore building and specifically some great action set pieces. And that's one of the things is just so like we are in the same category. I am not one of the biggest Lord of the Rings fans. I love the movies. I enjoyed the books when I read them back in the day. But when it comes down to the world, and I, I don't know everything in this, but I do understand that there are a lot of heavy fans out there who do love the world building, who do love the lore. And I think there might be some things in this series that absolutely will piss you off, and we'll talk about that during my issues and my mixed aspects, but I am a guy about positivity, and as much as I like this series, and specifically how much I really liked season two, I'm excited to talk about it today. So make sure to leave your thoughts down below, hit that like and subscribe button. But with that all said, let's dive into my pros, and the number one thing I wanna start out with with this review is primarily talking about, first off, the scope and ambition. Of course, we saw that in season one, and it, the season one looked absolutely amazing. Like, it makes me look at that, and some of the set pieces we saw, and I was just like, why does like Disney Plus's Mandalorian and all these Star Wars series and other things like not look this grand and why are they able to pull it off here? And that's a whole other question for another day. But that ambition and scope of what was in season one is even stronger in season two and so many different vistas and grand scenarios. And there were some shots in here that really had my jaw on the floor from just how gorgeous they personally looked. And one of my favorite things is Primarily everything from the back half of this season where episodes four, five, six, seven, and eight are grand. Like I, I loved so much of this and a lot of this epic and scope that is really added into here is a lot more of the creatures and the world building to everything in Middle Earth that of course we some book readers might be familiar with, some other people might be familiar from the movies, but they dive into a lot more of the creatures and the magic and certain other aspects of Middle Earth that really just took my jaw away from whether it was how the visual effects looked to again, how it looked inside the series and how it played out. And there's some moments in here that while again, this is a non-spoiler review and I'm trying to be as vague as possible, there are moments that I absolutely want to bust out and talk about specifically within the dwarves that like there's one shot that still is stuck inside my head. And I finished this series about two days ago and I still can't stop thinking about it. Yeah, the cinematography, the epic scope, the visual effects, all of that top notch, as well as the action in this season is a lot better. I liked it in the first season. I thought it was good, but the first season was very slow. And like I said, tried to pull off a mystery and build up a lot, which for me, you gotta have that taken toll of that whole aspect. And season two captures a lot more of that in the back half of the season. I, I will tell you right now, and we'll talk a little bit more about this in my mix and my cons. The first three episodes feel a lot more in the vein of season one of Lord of the Rings, and the back half of the season feels a lot stronger and actually feels like a new season. And I wish we would have maybe gotten to that a little bit faster, but 
to just say the least, like the action in here is absolutely stunning. And there are a couple set pieces in here where, again, my jaw hit the floor from how entertained, how enthralled, how thrilling it really truly was. And even some of the stuff like within the last two to three episodes, I would say, but most likely the last two really like that's where I can just go as far. And I look at everything and I would pause. I, I remember I paused at one point and I said, I'm so invested in this. And if a show can grab me into that and invest me that fast to where I just have to see what the next scene is, what the next scenario is, then you've won. Because when it comes down to TV and reviewing TV, it is very particular because I either have two feelings. One, I'm really enjoying this and I'm happy to be binging this series. And two, Jesus Christ, I do not want to finish this show, but I already asked for the screeners and I need to review it. And I'm so happy that I can come out and say, wow, yeah, I'm happy I asked for the screeners for season two. And I'm happy that I was able to binge it because I think that is the best way to watch this series, which will be different for a lot of you. I'm happy that they're at least giving out three episodes from the start and going one a week, one a week after that, because I think the first three episodes are solid. They're good. But four is where it really starts to kick off. Of course, I've talked a lot more about the technical achievements, and I think a lot of us knew that was all strong. It mostly comes down to the stories itself and other storylines and how we feel about them and specifically even the characters. And I will say this also, season one had a lot of dull moments where I understood a lot of it was world building, a lot of it was character building, building up these different relationships in these different areas. And just like if, if I'm comparing this to Game of Thrones where you're jumping back and forth between so many different groups and so many different characters, most of the time in Game of Thrones, you were never really bored by what you were doing. But in season one, there were cer certain times where I was just tuned out because I, I didn't understand what the fuck they were talking about, what they were doing, what they were saying. And season two, for the most part, does a way better job at balancing, specifically because a lot more of our characters are now conjoined and brought together. But everything with Numenor, I think that's how you say it. I might be mispronouncing that. Lord of the Rings fans, do not crucify me. I know I'm still not fully locked into. It was a little bit stronger this time around, but I still like everything happening there. I, I just found, yeah, some of it ties into what's going on, but other than that, I, I just didn't really care. I found that everything else was far more interesting in what was going on, whether it was The Stranger, Galadriel, Sauron, all things like that, and I just have to mention, but now diving into that, everything with Charlie Vickers' Sauron is phenomenal in this season. I think the character building of Sauron in here is grand and I love because now that we know it is him we're able to see a whole different point of view in his trickery and his cunningness that really adds to this nature specifically to the audience because what he's doing in this season and what we see he has done in the past how it plays into the storyline this time around and who he's interacting with what was so fascinating is because us as the audience knows who he is other characters might not know that reveal yet and the whole thing is that you just know it's this ticking time bomb of doom. And some people might feel like it's the opposite where it's like, well, it takes away from this whole intrigueness and that we know he is Sauron, but you know, all these other characters don't know that. For me, it was always like, what is he going to do next? And I think Charlie Vickers does such a fantastic job as this character. And I loved him throughout this entire season, his twists, his turns, he plays this role perfectly alongside that morphed clark who i again might be mispronouncing that saint mod fans let's rise up um i really liked her in season one i think she's even stronger here but i think that like the rest of the cast gets like a really big boost here i think like she's fantastic i think robert amario for, who plays elrond in here is phenomenal daniel wayman gets a lot more to do in here now now that he's not silent he's talking i loved what they did with the stranger in here specifically again some fans I'm curious to hear your thoughts when it comes down to his conclusion, but really big fan of what they did with The Stranger here and specifically that entire storyline. Of course, everything with the dwarves is also one of my favorites, and I think a lot of that comes down to Owen Arthur's Prince Durin, who actually got me very emotionally invested with his storyline and everything happening around him. One that was primarily really interesting was because they recasted Adar and Sam Hazeldin plays him this time around, and to say the least, I love the original actor who played him, 
but Sam did a phenomenal job here as well, and I think Adar is actually one of the more interesting characters this time around. I think that's one of the strongest aspects of season two is that we get more of a deeper dive into the villains this time around, and you get to see a whole other aspect of them than most series would ever dive into, and I think that is one of the things that I really loved about season two. And honestly, the more and more I talk about season two, the more and more happy I am with the season. But with that said, let's dive into my mixed aspects and my issues. So starting with my mixed aspects, I talked about this. I think some hardcore fans of Lord of the Rings are going to be a tad bit disappointed with certain things with the lore. I'm not going to get into spoilers. I've talked to other friends who have finished the series and have voiced their complaints to me and others who are kind of like, you know what? I like the changes. That may be different to you. I'm not the biggest Lord of the Rings fan in terms of lore and like lineage, but I do love the movies. I enjoyed the books back in the day, as I mentioned, so I didn't mind it. I like those. Alongside that, I am very fortunate enough to have been able to see the first, like the whole entire series within like one sit down, basically. Most people are not going to be binging this series. They're going to watch the first three and then they're going to watch it week to week. I don't know if that is the best thing, and I don't know if I could really much acclaim for you to do so. I think the best time to start is actually maybe not the first week where it's three episodes. I would say start when you can watch at least episode four, because I think episode four is where it finally starts to kick off. It's one through three are very much great setups. They're starting everything that's kind of coming about in the season two, reminding you of stuff from season one and kind of paying homage and epilogues to the, again, the events of season one. But for me, season two really kicks off once it hits episode four. And that's when I was like locked and loaded. And I was like, I'm going to finish this series. And it came down to the point where I told myself, I'm going to watch three episodes right now. And I'm going to finish the rest tomorrow. I watched three episodes. But then like something happens at the end of episode three. I was like, okay, I need to watch the next one. So I watched episode four. And I got so sucked in. I watched episode five next. Then episode six. And I only had a couple episodes left. So I finished them the following day. Uh, basically within the span of 24 hours. And it's very exciting. And I was happy to see that I was able to get that. But again, not everyone's going to have that same viewpoint. But I feel like this series actually works better as a binge than it does watching week to week. Then leads me into my only issue for the actual series. And again, that is... Just not every storyline is entertaining and everyone's going to be a little bit different and they did conjoin a lot of things together, but I can kind of feel where like certain things I'm like, maybe this will build up eventually. But now that we're in season two, almost every episode's almost an hour, which thank God, like, thank you for giving us these long run times, not these 30, 40 minutes, like some streaming services are giving us. I just felt like certain things I was like, okay, I would have liked a little bit more of this storyline over here instead of this one. And that's just a couple of like pacing issues here and there. But with that said, Rings of Power season two, I thought was such a big step up from season one. And if you would have told me that like, hey, Zach, you're going to like this a lot more than season one after the first three episodes, I probably would have told you you're a little bit crazy because by the first three, I was like, eh, this is about the same. But for me, season two, like won me over completely, even more on its ambitious and its scope and everything of that. And specifically where these storylines pay homage to the point where I cannot wait for season three. And what the trailer sold me in season two is exactly what I got from season two. And I'm so happy to be saying that. Again, I think if you were, were not a fan of season one, I don't know if this season's going to change your mind. I liked season one, but I was still like, okay, sell me on season two. And season two is a lot better. So with that said, I'm going to give season two an A minus. Thank you so much again, guys, for watching this. Make sure to hit that like, subscribe button, comment down below your guys' thoughts. And of course, until next time, stay classy.